Well, well, well. Welcome back. It's Tuesday morning. I wake up for a nice early Tuesday morning. Actually, a little bit late myself, but you know what? Just finished all my ground beef, all two pounds of it, and a gallon of coffee. So I'm feeling good, feeling great. Didn't get enough sleep last night, but that's okay because we can power through it with performance enhancing coffees. <laughs> Anyways, as always, wish you the best, the best, the happiest, the happiest. Just wishing you well over here from another very early, very dark uh, morning in Helsinki, Finland. Let's get into live scene. Bitcoin doing not all that much in the overnight hours uh, since we last spoke, but with few, but we do have a few things to be um, cognizant of right over here. Let me just get rid of this guy i don't want to i uh, don't want that alert to go off and destroy any ear holes right now but overall you know bitcoin's still below all major moving averages however with this pattern becoming extremely mature and you see this nice just tailing off volume going into that small pitter pattern which is typically where you know patterns do start to actually get resolved i am getting a little bit uh i i, I am getting a little bit on edge on the lower time frames right over here with how the reaction is coming off of the lower support of this bear flag that we've been looking at for the last, uh, I don't know how long this has been going on for like the last week or so. Anyways, uh, as long as Bitcoin is essentially, you know, just playing ping pong along this guy, it's very difficult to be immediately bearish. Now, overall, all higher time frames are extremely bearish. All, every, all indications likely point to new lows. But again, when talking about this sort of a thing, I have to be very, 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 um, careful with how I relate these ideas because it can take time that x factor of time which I think is um, is probably one of the most difficult things of trading so that's why I go off a of price action price action is my trigger for taking actions responding to how that goes down now until this lowest support right over here actually breaks 3400 I don't really want to be looking for a short and even then I wouldn't necessarily be looking for new lows um, new yearly lows I should say if this uh, if this formation breaks now it does have a measure move going all the way down down to I believe about our current lows or, or around the current lows um, but I do want to show a few things as a counterpoint to this right now but yeah measure move pointing all the way down around here around 3200 yeah we do have I mean it's basically just our prior low right over here so that's gonna be a nice block just block it off baby there we go between about 32 and 3250 you also notice that that is very similar to the measure move off of this metrical triangle that Bitcoin is still I believe playing out and in fact it is still very much it's still very much present as long as we are living below the breakdown point, which is all the way over here at 3850. So uh, Bitcoin's got a lot of work to do if it wants to negate that. Doesn't mean it can't negate that, but it's certainly, you know, it's it's pretty damn far away. And as you can see, just getting walked down over here uh, with lower highs and lower lows along the way. Well, looks to me like it really wants to hit this area down around here around 3250. But again, even if that's hit, I don't necessarily, while yes, I do believe that new lows are extremely likely to happen need to actually break this lower block down around here before that becomes uh before that becomes you know a, a likely reality now on our lower time frames uh meaning four hour right over here we do see our lower time frame also just starting to turn around we got the four hour stokes pointed back up we got the four hour rsi getting out of the uh, out of the bearish control zone and uh in the jewel over here as well is actually um is actually finding support along the 40 mark right over here now you will notice on the four hour jewel that going back for about a month now yeah ever since uh, ever since we put in the highs of of this last of this consolidation this thing is this the 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 light blue oscillator which is the one that i go off of has not been able to get back above the 60 mark over here which would be the more bullish so you controlled zone so yes again just another thing saying another thing suggesting that this is a bearish consolidation amongst a myriad of other things but i do need to point this out as as both the slower signals on this get below this uh, uh below my light blue i uh, could we have another run up into this uh, into this higher region right over here i mean you know, it, with the way that it's reacting along this uh, support, it is, you know, it's certainly reality. Now, how high would that push price action? I mean, I, I think price action would like at this point in time, 3450 would be a fucking pump, uh, you know, and uh, 3480 would certainly would, would I mean, certainly possible. But uh, as long as we're below 3480, I am I am more immediately bearish and I will be looking for shorts on either one of those. Um, I'm happy to play a position right around there just because a good it's a good risk reward opportunity. Again, there's no there's no guarantees in trading. There's no crying in baseball. But. When we're talking about statistical setups, when I see a good one, I have to take it. Um, and that's just because, you know, I don't have to risk all that much money in order to figure out if that trade is going to work or not. Now, if Bitcoin can get back above 3480 and close an hourly total above there, I don't want to be short at all. Um, because at that point in time, yeah, technically speaking, I need to see it get back above uh, 3530. Uh, but it, it, it would not bode well. This would start to look a lot more like a little bit of a trappy segment. 
um, not like the music, but uh, but like you know a bear trap. And over here, you know, we do see the same volume signature on this flag as well. So it's saying that it is getting pretty damn near completion, uh, like unlikely to last too much longer. When I say too much longer, again, time being the X factor of this, I could say, you know, probably by end of week it should be resolved. Is what it looks like. Um, but we got a lot of days until the end of the week now, don't we? So again, all higher time frames, you know, nothing's changed there. We are certainly very bearish. Don't get me wrong about that. You know, even going over to the 12 hour over here, I believe that 12 hour stokes are losing momentum right at the edge of the bearish control zone. So to me, that is, you know, typically a good sign. Uh, RSI just also in between the bearish control zone and just trying to take stabs at the neutral zone, not necessarily too successful. Um, you know, and living below all major moving average is certainly not good. But could we have another run up into the 34, 50 a share and wipe out some of the more over leveraged shorts? Yeah, very possible. And I see a lot of people getting really bearish right now too, um, talking about a big breakdown. Which you know, again, I am, I am of the same mind that I do believe, I strongly believe that Bitcoin can't, or will, will get to new lows. And I could probably put a much better, a much more solid case together than than most people out there um, who are perpetuating these sorts of things. But to get the delicacies of the intraday action, that is where, <laughs> that is where you have to separate the analyst from the trader. So as an analyst, I could say, yeah, this is this is garbage price action. This is extreme corrective in nature it is just lower highs at the end of the day and you have that nice orderly drop off in volume suggesting that this that this consolidation you know is going to be resolved soon ish you know remember this is over the course of two months so this could still take you know another like few weeks uh, maybe even a month um to be fully uh, to be fully set but yes it looks like dog shit however if you're going to be a trader When's the right time to take a position? Well, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Just sharing my exact sort of experience in these sort of situations on this exact, <laughs> exact, the exact thing that we're looking at right over here. So that is something that I can do. I'm not, again, I'm not a financial advisor. But what I can do is I can say, hey, again, this lower support right over here until we actually break 3,200. Don't really want to be talking about new lows. Um, however, I do believe that that is, uh, it, it is likely and, you know, my opinion is that it probably happens before end of month. To be honest, if I'm giving my opinion, but again, do I trade my opinion? Fuck no, I do not. My opinion is worthless. I do not trade my opinion. Uh, you got the you you got the two day dildo chart right over here. Two day Stokes not even able to cross the upside on the last tick. We will be getting another tick tonight, and I'm gonna imagine that it probably does gain some more divergence away from each other. You can see that that is gaining, you know, a little bit more uh, as you see the red ten simple and the yellow twenty one exponential. And again, I do believe that the two day dildo chart gets things a lot better than the daily. And the fact is, is that these are again they are diverging. They are diverging, telling us that there is downwards pressure on this price action so you know it, during intraday type bullshit do you think that we could have i mean do i think that we could have a move back up into the middle of, of, of the of the flag you know formation yeah i mean it's very possible i mean shit you could even get back above 3500 but it, i'm as long as we're below there i'm going to go with the more bearish interpretation of this because that is that is the correct way to be trading this at least in my at least in my experience um two-day jewel as well getting i mean mm, this is i mean to give you the signal well over here which was you know i mean that's that's well in past it's not really telling you too much right now we do have hidden bearish divergence um still in the two-day still playing out again this take these things take time these things take time um but uh but but that was you know on this peak right over here this peak right over here you know lower highs in the overall context of a downtrend while also it makes higher highs telling you that you know the bull sorry the uh, the bulls took more you know took more energy took more power to push it higher but they but on price action it didn't get as high so just in, in the concept of a downtrend again what is what is really hidden divergence anyways just continuation that's all it is um but uh what typically happens after you get it over here is that you will pop back down to the lower end at, at the very least usually more often than not uh, of the bearish control zone right over here so that would certainly give uh, bitcoin plenty of juice to 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 fall back down to at least the prior lows now does it have enough juice to break it that's where things get a little bit iffy because it would be a classic move to pop back down to the lower end of this range and rally off that and probably and do something you know like filling out this area just making people more and more and more and more and more uh, frustrated, which gets everyone on the wrong side of the trade. And then you get all the people saying the bottom's in the bottom's definitely in guys. Don't you know that the mining cost of Bitcoin it like it, it can't go lower. It can't go lower than this. It's like, yeah, heard the same thing at 6,000, heard the same thing at 4,000.
probably going to hear the same thing at 3000. It's highly variable. And that's a very easily self verified thing. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm no expert when it comes to mining, but if you just do a fucking Google search, you can figure these things out, uh, quite, 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 uh, quite quickly. But you know, my, uh, the reason why I'd be closing shorts down around here, at least on the first pass until it actually is officially broken on it, on at least a daily really, um, is that, uh, this to me right now is just kind of shaping out to be some sort of a descending triangle, which, you know, if we do take a stab at the lower end of the region, uh, I would not put it past it to to kind of rally back above this area right over here so to get a good idea of what we're doing and what the overall forces of the market are doing to tap into the collective consciousness of this as mark douglas would say we need to actually put on a fib because i want to know what the boston algos are doing what are they doing well we have a major down move coming in right over here, then big bounce, big bounce, and basically dead count bounce. But what's going on over here? We actually get great insight of what's going on, and uh, and the next piece of the puzzle will really solidify the forwards outlook on this guy as far as like getting a big big trade in. Um, but basically, you know, you have your first big up right over here, pop back down six one eight gets front ran, fucking classic, golden pocket for a reason. And where's the target going to be above the two three six? Going to be like the one three two, I believe it is. Um, if I put it in, it would probably be right over here. Pops back down to 618, gets picked up once again. Where's the target going to be? The 382. It's just fucking walking it down. As you see over here, you're getting the bear market walk down. Um, and then pops back down to the 618. Where's your next target going to be? The 0.5. All right, now you now you pop back down to the 618. And on this point, it actually failed. Remember, came down to the 786, which is where we're currently resting right now. And what I want to see is if this is going to maintain the more aggressive bearish posturing, which I, I, believe, it, I, I believe it probably will, um, is I want to see it stay below 3475. Uh, if Bitcoin gets back above that area right over there, I change around my short term outlook to probably having a rally back above back into this area uh, around 3650 to 3750. That's also going to be your monthly green 55 exponential, which remember, we just put in a new monthly um, uh, last week. And this is very important to me because, well, the monthly is where, you know, I mean, again, where I come from as a as, as an equity options market maker is I used to look at, well, equities, which had decades and decades of information and we use the monthly to, to, to kind of generate are we generally bullish generally bearish well on a setup like this on the monthly this is incredibly nasty we have broken the green 55 exponential for the first time in bitcoin's history uh closing well below it over here so if bitcoin were to rally back up into that area where's the green 55 coming in around 36 60 essentially so if bitcoin did get back around that area that would be a major sell for me um because it would also be the top of that resistance that we just looked at on the descending trend line so really good confluence with that area as we do get the 10 simple the red 10 simple and the yellow 20 minute exponential you know ever so close to kissing right now which <laughs> again not fucking good uh as you consolidate right over here if that does cross in the next tick i mean it's probably not going to cross in the next tick it'd probably take at least two more um that's going to likely have some severe implications Again, just another impetus for, for price action dropping. Um, now, here's the thing, though. If Bitcoin, whichever one happens first, I'm not too concerned about whether, you know, Bitcoin pops back up to 30, let's call it just 3,700 and kind of, you know, average in the middle over there or drops to new lows by 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 breaking that 3,250 area that we spoke about before. Uh, I would be looking towards this area down around here. So the the, the, the trade is essentially the same. Um, as far as the monthly goes, I would be pretty comfortable in saying that it's unlikely that we see above, you know, 4,150 before we go below 3,000. I think. I'd be pretty comfortable in saying that. Um, of course, there is variable variability in the markets, but this is, you know, this to me coming down and breaking the yellow 21 exponential with, you know, no no questions asked, and uh, then breaking the green 55 a couple dildos later. Well, that is not a good setup. I mean, all we've done is just put in lower highs on this guy, just lower high reject from getting, you know, within about a hundred dollars on this one uh, from the prior, and now it's just kind of like slowly but surely getting ground down. Uh, we can't really see, yeah, volume reads on on the BLX chart are fucking worthless. Uh, but uh, monthly stokes over here still still headed down. We are still in the heavy grips of a bear market. We are just taking in to the uh, into the bearish control zone for the second time in Bitcoin's history um, on the monthly, uh, and again getting. You know the deepest it's ever it's actually ever been on the monthly as well so again you know this this 2400 range right over here kind of makes sense um if and when bitcoin does break the uh the 3250 support which i have my eyes on uh, if we do go over here to the weekly i do want to spend a little bit of time here as well we didn't really cover this all that much yesterday but you know weekly 377 coming around that range as well around 2600 which is you know essentially where i'm looking anywhere between 23 and 2600 is kind of where i'm looking at um red 10 simple moon average is actually you know is is now aggressively sloped down and uh 
uh, coming in around the 36, uh, 30 area, 36, 20, actually officially right over here. So to me, you know, as long, you know, as, as long as you're below all these guys, this is not a good setup. Um, you see all major movement averages migrating below the 6,000 area right over here, which is where Bitcoin broke down. So, you know, if, if you think Bitcoin's, if, if your favorite person on on, on Twitter or, or crypto YouTube or whatever the fuck it is, is telling you that Bitcoin's going to V-bottom out of here and back above 6,000, uh, extremely unlikely. And in, in fact, just like I said, I, I think that it's, it's incredibly unlikely that Bitcoin both opens and closes, keyword opens and closes, a weekly dildo above this purple 200 exponential before, you know, finding its ultimate lows, actually. Uh, and again, that would essentially align with the monthly uh, 55 as well so you know bitcoin <laughs> people talking about like whatever you know whatever fucking inverted quasimodo elf shoe bullshit that people have come up with now again pattern traders it's like i'm, I'm almost in cryptocurrency i most relate pattern traders to like elliott waivers but <laughs> it's it's almost it's just a, it's just a couple steps away they're just like using a little bit of a less scientific approach um but, uh, you know, you hear a lot of people talking about 5,000 or 4,500 or whatever it might be because uh, back over here in this area, Bitcoin, it's the fractal. We have fractal. Guys, guys, fractal. It's like, okay. <sighs> Fractal. All right, you motherfucker. I mean, the problem is, is that this area right over here is very similar to this area right over here. And there's a lot to be said about market cycles having similar characteristics. They have brotherly characteristics, not identical twins, though. And this is due to, you know, us just being psychological beings. Humans, we are related by that human psychological factor. We're all, you know, we've all basically been the same uh, since we became anatomically modern homo sapiens. This is conditioning that goes back hundreds of thousands or whatever, how many years ago. It's too much. It's you. you we likely haven't gotten away from it, myself and Included, unless you're like some sort of a monk in in a cave in Tibet, if that's even a place, I think I might just be making up uh, Asian words. But my point is, is that unless if you like let, let go of those emotional attachments. Um, you know, the reason why we get very similar market cycles across all different assets, and I've noticed this not just in magic internet money, but also Forex commodities and where I come from as, as a professional market maker in equities, you get very similar reads on how these sort of things play out because it's, again, we're, it's all related to human psychology. So I always like to say we're not necessarily looking at a chart of Bitcoin, although we are. It's like you didn't really lose your money. Well, <laughs> you kind of lost your money. <laughs> you know, it's one of those. Yeah, it is a chart of Bitcoin, but it's a chart of human psychology with regards to Bitcoin is what it really is. Um, and that evolves over time and it has its own personal, it has its own personality. So market cycles have general rules in the way that they play out. And then that particular asset has its specific behavior. And Bitcoin, we do have some information on how it likes to play out, it played out in the past. And this area right over here is very similar to this area right over here. So I'll give it credit at first, but watch there is something to be aware of that i think a lot of people are not really taking into, into context but first things first you know you look at the volume on this guy right over here and related to your parabolic cycle right over here that's very similar to the volume on this guy right over here and related to your parabolic mark cycle right over here just as an aside if bitcoin does get the more violent form of capitulation like you see right over here i want to see volume like this in relation to your parabolic cycle like this you can see that they're very very similar over here it is nowhere near because remember this is measured in coins traded not dollars traded so when the dollar when the when the price when the dollar price of bitcoin is quite literally you know a third or a fourth of what it was over here over here or then uh, then over here well well, the volume characteristics are actually significantly lower. So if we did, I mean, we can just briefly show it right now. Why not? Bitcoin dollar. Um, this this will represent the volume in, uh, in in dollars rather than coins trading. You can see very, very easily, you know, this guy right over here, uh, completely overshadowing anything that you did right over here. In fact, and, and remember, people get this so silly because, you know, just because you read a fucking article on BuzzFeed or Investopedia, which are basically the same things, um, that, you know, guys, okay, I've done the analysis and I've been I've been studying for the last two weeks. And you know what? Capitulation has high volume. It's like, all right. Yeah, high volume on the lows, and it's buying. Not, not, not this right over here. This is your actual high volume read, technically. But remember, in the context of actual of, of actual volume done it, it with regards to dollars, it is nowhere near. Anyways, I'm getting way off track. Sorry. Let me get back to the back to the analysis right over here. Um, you'll notice in this area, not only is the volume very similar to this area right over here, but also just the overall shape and what led us into that area. You'll notice that Bitcoin put in a descending triangle right over here. Descending triangle breaks down, gives you a nice 53% drawdown. And then after that, you know, you have a nice pump back up from, from dildo body, dildo body, about 25%-ish area. Over the course of, you know, again, six weeks, you know, this uh, each and every one of these is, uh, is a week weekly dildo so 
about six six or so weeks, two and a half months. And we have the same thing right over here. Descending triangle breaks down, gets your bloody glon girl and 51.5% uh, drop down. And what did we have on our bounce? About, you know, about the same, about 24, 25%, something like that. Um, again, over the course of about, I guess we're on week seven now. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, actually significantly more. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to destroy any hopes and dreams with that. Um, but yes, this market cycle likely to take a lot longer than than the one that we did prior. Because, you know, as the question as the asset in mind matures, as the sorry, as the asset in question matures, I'm just definitely struggling with my words today. Market cycles take longer and longer, but also just due to that, there's more people in this market and we need, you know, in order to get more people to pitch late, it takes more time. And how do you cause the maximum amount of pain? Take your time, baby. Take your fucking time. Anyways, um, you know, so, so, so yeah, so a lot of similarities between these two. In fact, we can even bring up even more, even something even more, uh, uh, more, um, more important in my mind, or sorry, not not more important, but just as important and very interesting as well is the MVT signal down around here on this oscillator, which oscillates and basically tells major market bottoms and major market tops. Doesn't mean it's necessarily a full on market cycle bottom or full on market cycle top, but you know, you flashed a red right over here on the 20,000 top. You flashed a green right over here on the 6,000, which this, by the way, was an example of capitulation. This is what capitulation can actually look and feel like. So if you were around in February of 2018, just quite literally one year ago, um, you do, you do have, you actually do have an example of, of what that is. Bitcoin rallied hundred percent off those lows within the span of a week and a half. I mean, that, that is significant. Now, obviously this, I could argue that that was its own bubble in and of itself because not too, not too far later, about half a year later, a year later, uh, Bitcoin started ticking red on this guy once again, and we started consolidating this, uh, in this sunny triangle and then break down anyways. Let's go over to 2014 and see what the MBT signal was doing in this uh, in this area. You'll see something very similar. You see your parabolic blow off top right over here, sparking some red. Then you pop down um, and put in some your bull trap right over here. And then we go into this area right over here, which is what we're looking at in the area, the area of comparison, which you'll see, and this is what everyone's looking at right now. Everyone's looking at this and they're saying, okay, so Bitcoin popped down to new lows, then then then, then revisited those lows and then rallied back up and put in a higher high and tested the 200 exponential if they even like talk about that much. Um, which is like, okay, great, man, fucking great. I'm glad, I'm, I'm happy that you noticed that. But again, this is why fractal, like I don't know a single professional who uses fractals. I don't know if you know, if you know someone who has tens of millions of dollars in the bank can verify this and only trades fractals, I'm happy to learn. I really, I actually am very, very much open to this sort of thing. But as far as that, as far as Elliott Waves, as far as fucking, you know, insert whatever random bullshit uh, thing here, maybe, maybe not bullshit, maybe not bullshit, but again, Usually when people argue on that, it's they haven't met that criteria, which fair enough. If you're happy with where you are, you're happy with where you are. And that's all good, man. That's all good. But for myself, as learning this as an actual professional, I wanted to learn from the best of the best. No one fucking uses this on the floor of New York Stock Exchange Arca. No one uses this on Chicago, on Chicago Board of Ops Exchange that I knew of. I can put it that way very bluntly. Anyways, uh, let's look at the MBT signal, the the read on this guy. Whoops, you motherfucker. Stop doing that bastard okay so you'll so you'll notice right over here so we put in the bull trap pop back down this is the this is the first low you rally off that low revisit the low and then put in a higher high and then roll on over after you get kind of wrestled and wrangled back below the uh black back below the moving average on this guy and then you actually flash green on the your ultimate low right over here okay well let's actually mark this area off now keep in mind you are around the 90 area right over here i'm actually going to put in a nice horizontal to mark this off and let's just fast forward over here to 2019 and you can see that we're quite literally right in the same area. Remember, this is the network value divided by the daily transaction value and then interpolated use a forward, uh, a 90, uh, forward moving, forward backward 90 day moving average, I believe it is, something like that. So by the way, you can't use this on a fucking weekly. Oh my God, I get a million messages about this today. Again, I don't mean to come off as arrogant or, or, or I don't know, as an asshole, but it's just like, please just watch the video. Please just watch the video. <laughs> It's explained there. You can't use this on a weekly. It's not going to make sense um, given the inputs uh, to put it, you know, to put it lightly. Uh, but we have the, we have a very similar read over here. Not only are we all, are we in the, uh, about the same region all around this 90 area, but you know we drop down all the way over here, put in a low. Sorry, put in a low right over here, put in a high, uh, and then sorry, we drop down, put in a high. 
come back to the low, put in a higher high right over here, come back to the low, and now we're wrestling with that moving average, just like just like it was in twenty uh, in twenty fourteen. Now, the MVT is actually above the moving average right now. So fair enough. D does that mean that we're gonna break down today? It actually reduces the likelihood. Again, I'm not really looking for this to happen today, to be honest with you. Um, but my point is, is that on the MVT signal, which kind of does get rid of a lot of the price action noise, or or, so, or kind of uh, offers a different perspective, that would actually suggest that we've already kind of you know if you are looking looking at that if you are looking for a similar read that has already played out and remember this is you know external type things to the actual underline which uh which i put a lot of weight on um so again uh while we're here on the daily let's actually let's go back to uh, to gdax and uh let's see yeah daily is still below the exponential right over here it looks like we're just coming back and testing it as long as we're below that you know pressure's on to the downside people are calling this uh, a falling wedge it's not a falling wedge at all whatsoever again people like <laughs> I don't know where I don't know what the obsession with pattern traders is in cryptocurrency. I guess it's because it's like the easiest thing. Um, patterns do work in other traditional markets, not like the creature patterns, but like you know your your your. I mean wedges. I don't really even think I I I don't really don't see wedges work t in too many other markets, but channels and triangles work in crypto from what I've seen, and they work pretty damn well in traditional markets. But you know you had a falling wedge right over here, and what you see a lot of the time. What well, the reason why I don't like them, the reason why I'm a wedge racist, and I would I would eradicate them all in chambers, take that as you will. Um, right over here is uh, you know you break it out to the upside, it's confirmed very low volume so there was a warning sign on this to be fair but once uh but but the breakout fails and that's that's what you see a lot of the time that's what you see a lot of the time man so yeah if you want to call me the hitler of of, of uh, falling wedges i would be happy to accept that title i fucking hate them kill them all but it's also good because it gets a lot of people on the wrong side of the trade and that's how you produce liquidity this is a game of liquidity you know how you have like games of thrones we need a games game of liquidity because you know when you're a bigger player in this market and believe me there are plenty there are plenty my friend's firm being one of them um you know who manage you know half a billion billion plus dollars well they can't just enter at market on a trade so how do they how do they get their fills they present the illusion of a of of of, of a big move you know aka painting a pattern breaking it out and then fading it very very fast so overall you know when you're in a bear market when you're creating lower highs and lower lows over the course of over a year i'm going to always go with the former trend until told otherwise um so yeah you know what makes it difficult is that in the lower time frames and I actually got shit for this yesterday <laughs> so, so someone got mad at me yesterday because uh he said um he said i forget he he got mad because i because i scalped on video yesterday i don't know he's like, i guess you're not supposed to short this thing <laughs> it's like all right man good luck making a living <laughs> good luck making a living in a downtrend then my friend um i'm actually not trading anything right now i have no positions to really show but uh but over here you know on the eight hour you know i'm, I'm looking at this eight hour stoke still headed south but they are losing momentum i i mean you will have the eight hour jewel coming and we're going to find out if this wants to be support or not. Uh, we do have, we do have this nice trend line going in right over here, you know? So did we just put in a top? Uh, what was this like a couple days or yeah, this was a few days ago, right over here on uh, February 3rd. Um, you know, do we head lower from there? I mean, this, this is, this is a tough area. What about the, uh, what about the RSI? RSI is a bearish read, but it is trending above the exponential right now. I, I don't have, I don't have a strong opinion on this, to be honest with you. Um, to be honest with you, I shouldn't, I should not say that. Like, of course, I'm the only, ch the only point in doing a channel like this to be honest, cause it's not like I care about the advertisement revenue. In fact, most of the time, man, I just, I play music. So whenever I play music, I don't get access to the actual advertisement revenue. I don't give a fuck about it. I actually trade for a living. So hopefully, uh, uh, hopefully I verify that myself. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, I think in the lower time frames, it's just, it's easy enough to say really the, the most legitimate thing to say is that, Hey, you know, as long as you're below 34, what is this? 3480 right over here on GDAX. Uh, I am looking for shorts and I would be looking for this pattern to re to be resolved to the downside. But that also means that we could rally all the way back up and test this area and then fall over from there, which would actually be really good because one, it would get all of the falling wedgers, which I, I can't even, I, I, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I can't even, I literally cannot even, I uh, understand how people are putting a falling wedge on this. It doesn't even work. Again, people just want to see what they want to see. Again, I want to be bullish too. I fucking love titties. That's a fact that you can trust in. Titties may be one of my top three favorite things. Elsa will be getting massive, just the disgustingly biggest porn star titties when Bitcoin gets back to 20,000. Do I want to be bullish? Fuck yeah, I do. However, <laughs> however, you got to call a spade a spade. And right now, 
is a bearish trend. Um, and the trend is your friend until the end of the trend. And a trend that's been a, a year, year plus long strong, well, <laughs> I'm going to keep on going with it until it stops working. Uh, so, yeah. Um, if Bitcoin, yeah, again, if Bitcoin does get back above this 3480 area, then yeah, then uh, I would be, I would not want to be short. I'd be looking for a run to kind of test somewhere to this region, whether it's 3650, the monthly 55 as we looked at, or fully, you know, test the upside of this uh, resistance at 30, about 3800 or such. Um, you know, either one is all good. But if we were to put pain in a falling wedge over here, again, I, I just, I don't even really see where people are seeing this. Um, the volume character would be, would be wrong. Again, <laughs> Investopedia, best place to go to. Uh, Trading View, best place to go to. Crypto Reddit, best place to go to. Crypto Twitter, oh my God. It's like, does it get any better? Yes. No, it doesn't. It's crypto YouTube. Um, so again, I, I just don't even see the right the right criteria for that. But it would be great to get a lot of people on the wrong side of the trade. Now, the, now my counterpoint to that would be we actually already have, according to the longs and shorts data, plenty of longs on the table. We have 31,000 open longs versus a little over 24,000 open shorts with 3,000 of those hedged. So it's really 21, 21 and a quarter uh, short. Um, and again, remember, this is this is interesting to me because uh, more so for the shorts, because when the shorts get this low, historically speaking, it does match up with the major dumps. Anytime that shorts have gotten to like these critical lows, which over here when Bitcoin was like, you know, 20,000 bucks, it obviously you didn't have to put on as many short coins to get the same sort of exposure. Um, but when you get to these critical areas, this is, you know, this was your January dump, February dump. This was your March dump from 10,000 to 6,000. This was your August dump from 8,000 to 6,000. This was your November dump, like breaking 6,000 to going to 3,000. And then we've once again got in this area, um, which is interesting to me, but uh, typically speaking, when you do actually see these moves take off, it's, it's just shorts piling on. So the fact that the, the fact that we've seen hesitation so far is not the best read, is, is not the best read. Um, so again, you know, gotta be careful in this range. Uh, but yeah, you know, longs, not really too much make off the longs. I, I mean, any t and again, I don't believe that you can do like trend lines on these things. I don't believe that you can do Elliott waves or fucking formations or divergences or anything like that. That's silly. It's these are very incomplete pieces of the whole in, on a, on just an exchange, one of many Finex. Um, but was it, but what is interesting to me is this this, this marked off area right over here where it gets around thirty three thousand. That's actually where, for historically speaking, you actually do match up with some nasty dumps, just like we looked at on the shorts around that low twenty thousand number. Um, but each and every time, it's either spiked here or gotten above and then gone back below. Those do match up with the major dumps. So again, just too many people on the bus. We did kind of reach up to that region um, just a few days ago on the second of February. So again, um, you know, underlying mark dynamics are certainly bearish. No doubt about that, but again, price action first. Uh, let's go look at futures right now. What are futures doing? Um, back to the futures. Back. <laughs> it's like backed, daddy backed, coming in, coming in hot, baby. Um, not can't really make too much off this. I mean, literally no trade. I mean, <laughs> No trading being done here. No trading being done over here. No trading being done over here. No trading being done over. It's like where's where? Who is trading this? No one. It's like, guys, Wall Street is manipulating Bitcoin by magic. <laughs> It's like there's no one trading this shit, man. Um, but uh, but according to futures, you know we do have this nice gap right over here around 34.25. So if Bitcoin did want to rally back up into this area and f and like completely fulfill that, that would put spot you know around that 34.50ish area, I suppose. So if Bitcoin were to run back to that area, that would you know that would likely be a play in my in my book. Um, but uh, but overall, you know, very very similar chart. You know, very, 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 very similar chart. Just basically, basically filling out a bear flag. Right, or sorry, this is actually not really a bear flag. We are doing something different on CMEs, which is interesting to me. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Bitcoin did want to run back into this area. I mean, did, was it already filled? You could make the argument that this filled it right over here. Again, it's not until it's it, when you have like a full body and body, then then it's like it's no questions asked. When it's a wick, it's some questions asked. Um, so I, I do want to raise that kind of point. But hey, you know, if if uh, being a, you know, I, I'm in no rush to get a position right now because, I, because either, you know, it's what I miss out on a few bucks from here waiting for confirmation below 3,400, or I wait for a position somewhere either at 3,450 or right over here at 3,480, whichever one happens, you know, again, I'm not, not, uh, not stressing out on that. Um, 
whichever way that the cone uh, tends to fall. Um, okay, so, 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 let's go check out GBTC, which is incredibly interesting to me as well right now. Let's put on a daily, and yes, it does look slick. It does look like it wants to roll over. It does look like it's broken the rising channel right over here, the rising channel bear flock to the downside, but we're still not getting the reaction, the most important thing, the reaction. So what does that tell me? Be careful as well. Be careful, because until this thing actually breaks down, this one has been leading spot prices uh, for the last over a year. So uh, I would like to see this thing actually, you know, formally break down if, um, if, uh, if we're going to see spot breakdown as well, uh, the measure move on this bear flag would be pointing down here to that, uh, to that 245 ish area. Oh, wow. It deleted my, you bastard. You deleted, you deleted my, uh, my things. Well, let's actually get this right. Then uh, we do have a horizontal. Where would it be right around here? It looks like, and look at that matches up beautifully. Um, so yeah, that, that would send spot charts back well into the two thousands. I'd imagine. Uh, according to the premium on this guy, but uh, yeah, you know, again, until until I actually see the reaction off this, I mean, we're not seeing the volume, we're not seeing the reaction, which are the two most important things. So that's usually a warning sign. Usually a warning sign could be a trap. Uh, lower time frames don't look good. I mean, don't get me wrong, lower time frames look absolute dog shit, but uh, yeah, I mean, maybe just have to wait it out. It's it's taking its time. It's getting damn close as well to resolving itself, but uh, not quite there just yet. Not quite there just yet. Now let's go back on over to Mr. Bitcoins and uh, and I want to check out the volatility on this guy. I do want to see what the read is on maybe an eight hour is going to get this about right. Let's go to historical volatility rank. A shout out to Bali Poor for, for creating this um, beautiful indicator. And uh, you can see, yeah, you can see on the volatility rank that we are starting to come down quite a bit. The eight hour is not necessarily in like crazy move mode. Uh, to put it in the perspective, when it's in crazy move mode, it's right around here. We are getting around there, not quite there though. Um, this, you know, big moves right over here in May. I believe that was the top of 10,000 uh, 10, right over there. Then breakdown. Um, <clears throat> doesn't tell us which way direction is going to be, but it does tell us that a big move is likely to come in. So uh, I feel like I'm getting a weird read on this. Let's go to the four hour. Yeah, four hour looks a little bit more right. And the four hour is very, very low. The four hour wants to, wants to uh, say in a move is coming at any moment. Um, and again, when I say any moment, understand this is a four hour. So that means like week, two weeks, whatever it might be. Uh, again, I feel like I've been a little bit misheard on that, but uh, fair enough. Um, so over here on the uh, um, on the four hour, you know, putting that to confluence with the with the uh, with the volume read on this guy, the volume signature, and also the the volatility rank, a big move is likely coming. Um, pretty damn pretty damn relatively soon when we're talking about things we're looking at months of price action so relatively soon is like weeks you know um and uh and i'd imagine that well when you're in a bearish consolidation probably gonna be the downside where is it gonna end up if it does break to onto the downside well you know we looked at uh we we, we looked at what was it called gbdc right we looked at um we looked at the monthly but let's also look at this as a descending triangle and if we do break this to the downside and confirm that to the downside well where is it likely to end up to as the as the measure move off of a descending triangle is coming in right around well 2400 which remember that was the that was the cyan 89 exponential on the monthly which is likely to be the next target if this thing actually does break down which i do believe it will but we also have plenty of other things to look at as well over here the weekly uh, on stamp bringing this out and over and uh, i do have this area kind of cordoned off by the blue box between about 2300 to 2600 you can see that the 886 Fibonacci retracement is right around that area which is currently which was actually the bottom in 2014 a nice spike low right over there on capitulation day um some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming around that area some volume profiles signifying some major action by the way the current area that we're sitting on right now has about nothing doing uh once you break 3250 all the way down to mid 2000s just like when bitcoin broke 6000 over here there's nothing doing until you know low 4000 thousands high three thousands so again likely to be a quick flush if and when that area does break but again first things first got to actually break that's why price action well hard to trade against it man very hard to trade against it uh going back on over here to the blx index you'll notice that the 377 is coming around that area so just another thing again the monthly also suggesting the 89 exponential right in this right in this range as well uh, as well right around 2400 and as we just saw on gbdc the mesh move off that bear flag was all the way down well into the well into the twos as well so that would probably put spot you know again in that in that range um does that does that mean that it's guaranteed to be bitcoin's ultimate low no it doesn't i need to see reactions in order to to in order to gauge that but going back on over here uh there's a few other you know if, if the reaction off this area right over here is not good just like you know this the reaction off this area right over right over here was just god awful as well um then i'd be looking toward the next towards the next one at 1869 and then if that one fails you know then i go then i join the super bears down around you know 1000 maybe even below 
so again, you know, as a trader, you, I, I can never say that's like, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I would never say, I think that price action is definitely going to 1000 and trade off that. Cause that's fucking suicide. Um, you know, you have to be able to respond to price action and there are certainly obvious areas of potential reversal beforehand. And again, understand how major market lows are put in. It's, it's, it's by, it's by an entity with extremely deep pockets, not just, it's, it's not done by like fucking retailers. It's that's silly. It's very, very simple mind and shows a great misunderstanding of how the markets actually work. You know, if, if someone with, you know, half a billion, half a billion to a billion dollars is, is coming into the market and says, uh, I'm, I'm going to put in a floor right here. Well, understand that that's going to show itself up in the charts pretty damn visibly as you saw in 2014, one of those major spikes up in volume. So what happens after that? Well, they know that everyone else is going to know. So their perspective is to, is to accumulate as much. So they're going to do it at essentially a time when people are probably least expecting it off of, you know, a major fear, fear induced, uh, dr dump. So again, it's, it's one of those things where, um, you hear a lot of people kind of calling out, you know, numbers, but it's, it's silly to me. I need to see the reaction and you see the response of price action so that I can make a, I can make a judgment on it. Is this the actions of a major, you know, of a major player or not? Uh, obviously in the current area off of 3,200, definitely not. Absolutely not at all. The volume signature is nowhere near that. Um, so again, uh, let's go check out um, let's go check out spies. And I actually want to present something over here on spies on traditional markets. Now, yesterday I was uh, I was wrong in saying that that my opinion was this was probably going to be a uh, probably going to be a local top, a nice little doji dildo. But again, this is why I trade technical analysis and not my opinion. My opinion is fucking worthless. As soon as we took out the high of this doji dildo yesterday, and we I mean that was that was a signal to get long. I hope that I was pretty damn um, I hope that I was pretty damn. Uh, uh, direct about saying about saying something like that that you know also you can't really get short you can't really look, be looking for downside until we take out the low of, of this uh, of this doji dildo right over here we did not got about uh, 20 cents shy and then shot up so again that's you know that's 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 trading technical analysis not trading opinions um, now this thing is you know it's t I'd still be looking for uh, at some point I, I think that this this rally can go a little bit more maybe um, what are what our daily stokes look like? Yeah, just crossed up. Daily RSI, getting into the bullish control zone for the first time in a while. Uh, overall, you know, Jewel over here getting pretty damn high as well. It typically doesn't stay that high for that long, to be fair. Uh, but my point is, is that, and something that I do want to talk about that's that's perhaps more important is the relation between this and Bitcoin on the big move. So I'm gonna overlay Bitcoin uh, spot uh, represented in the background by the uh, by the high low close bars uh, chart and you can see that on the critical moves whether it's the highs or the lows these things do actually play them out relatively similarly uh, like at the same time I mean so the reason why I bring this up is because if and when spies over here do top and start turning back around I would imagine that's probably about going to be around the same time that Bitcoin does as well whether they happen, you know, on the same day or, or just basically like on the same week, doesn't matter to me, but some, you know, that should be a warning sign. Uh, you know, we, they, they put in their highs and at the end of 2017, right over here, then put in their lows basically at the same time, uh, put in another low right over here. And then, and then after that, they had divergence between each other. The, basically Bitcoin went into consolidation, having a downwards consolidation and spies went into a nice rising channel consolidation, but not really making new highs or, or sorry, did make a new high right over here. But again, in the, in the formation of a, you know, of, of, of an Nice, uh, of a nice bearish consolidation um, it, in the form of a rising channel and then breaks down. Once we actually broke 6,000 right over here, look at SPY is actually breaking down to their lows as well. So if and when uh, SPY does put in their high right over here, you know, so wherever it might be, uh, then I'd be looking for Bitcoin to probably topple over as well. Just as an aside, like again, a secondary type of thing to be aware of. The Bitcoin still still considered a risk on asset um, as far as I'm concerned, as far as what the market shows. But uh, as far as SPY goes, I don't really want to be bearish on this thing as long as you're especially above like 260, 261. Um, even then, I don't really want to be bearish on it until you break, you know, below 256 or something like that. It's 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 going to take its time. Um, right now, I mean, you know, you got to be you got to be respectful of the strength. Uh, so again, responding to price action, not really telling it what you want to do now. Alts look like actual dog shit right now. So this is a counterpoint to what I'm saying on Bitcoin. You know, it's presenting the the whole time component. Uh, 
something like XRP is is gave up its its whole rally of last week essentially. Again, this is why you look at the higher time frames because as long as you're below 34 and a half cent, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed from a macro perspective, uh, and a clear rejection around that area and shoved right back down below a whole major moving average on the three-day little chart. You have the three-day little death cross right over here, just getting ground down and down and down. Uh, 189 exponential about to cross at 200, and that's going to be confirmed on the next tick, which I believe is today, uh, later today at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and uh, three-day stoke still angled down, but again, until you actually break 28 cent right over here, it's hard to get. You know, it's it's the same thing as Bitcoin breaking. You know, 32.50. It's hard to get too damn bearish. Got to actually break that area first and foremost um, before we can talk about mid to high uh, teens over here. Uh, Litecoin is is the only Mrs. Litecoin is the only one doing something different, um, really. Like Mrs. Litecoin is grinding up against this resistance at 34 and a half, uh, 34 and a half bucks. Which, if it does break out of, uh, yeah, you do have resistance at 36 bucks, but I, I would imagine that it probably gets another run at this uh, 39 and a half resistance right over here. Uh, now you do have, you know, tailing off volume. This is overall, I, I believe that this is overall to be considered a consolidation um, based off the volume, uh, based off the volume, and based off our read on the RSI over here, which is just basically just kind of oscillating in the neutral uh, zone. Uh, but Mrs. Litecoin is the most is the most not bearish of the of the top ten, I'd say. Um, uh, but again, needs to actually confirm above this area first at thirty four and a half dollars. Otherwise, you know, it's just it's just playing in the range essentially. Um, just like 30, 30 bucks down around here is your support until you actually break thirty bucks. It doesn't you don't really want to be too damn bearish. You don't want to be really. It's hard to be bullish on this thing to begin with. But until you actually break thirty four and a half bucks to the upside, it's you know it's hard to be bullish. Um, more importantly speaking. When we're talking about the overall context of the market where Mr. Bitcoin, King Bitcoin, and uh, Mr. Butter, Buttersworth, Mr. Buterall typically run things, I would be hard-pressed to think that Mrs. Litecoin breaks out to the upside when the other two are looking a little bit less healthy. That would, that's my personal opinion. But hey, price action, that is what I'd be going off of right over here. Um, definitely the least bearish of, uh, of, uh, of the top 10, I believe. Uh, let's go over and check out uh, Mr. Buterall, Mr. Buttersworth over here. Uh, still looking sick. Um, still using the 10 simple as resistance, it looks like. Actually, rejection on it yesterday after a nice, was that a bearish engulfing? It was not. Came about 13 cents uh, short of that. But you know, looking at the lower time frames, we're basically looking at another bear flag right over here, right? Uh, putting on the putting on our, uh, our 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 drawing tools, you can see very quickly that uh, very similar read to Mr. Bitcoin, right? Um, basically, putting a descending triangle right over here, broke that down, putting a bear flag right over here. Again, just getting that nice walk down. Now, the measure move off this bear flag is pointing down around to the 886 Fibonacci retracement, which we are currently resting on the 786. So again, very similar read to Bitcoin overall. Um, but again, until we actually you know confirm below this. Area, Area, and then you're gonna have to deal with you know 104 and a half, uh, but this area being 107, the lower support of this uh, bear flag, um, you know, it's just it's still just consolidation. You might have another run at the top of the range. I mean, shit, you could. I mean, just because you have a range over here doesn't mean that you can't break the top of the range. You certainly can. It's just it's less likely. And and again, same thing as Bitcoin. As long as you're below, especially the 618 around 117 ish area. Sorry, this is wrong. I can see that I have this. Uh, should be a little bit lower. Yeah, there we go. Right around 1 116, 117 area. As long as you're below there, yeah, I am overall bearish. But that also means just like Bitcoin, if it gets back above that area, back above 117, 116 and a half, whatever it is, uh, then yeah, probably have another run back under the into the 0.5 or 382 right around. Uh, 125 and a half 134 and a half you know uh, by the same token though overall mo mostly bearish though mo mostly bearish um weekly over here do we have anything to be aware of on the weekly i mean weekly just looks like continuation weekly stokes having a fresh cross down not able to get out of the bearish control zone or anywhere near the edge of it actually uh weekly rsi back below the exponential uh mr buttersworth looks a little bit more bearish than the other two um, certainly, certainly more than uh, the, mis the Mrs. Litecoin, but Mr. Bitcoin as well, I would say. Um, so going back on over to Mr. Bitcoin right over here, you know, yeah, it looks sick. Yeah, it looks like it wants to, like, yeah, it looks like it wants to top to, uh, or fall over. Yeah, it's in a bearish consolidation, but you know, when you have your lower time frame uh, also just kind of switch around like this, it does suggest that uh, we might, or this is actually a two hour just crossing down. What about our hourly? What was the last tick on that? Yeah. Okay, losing momentum there. What about six hour? Six hour still headed down. Hmm. 
Because it's only the four hour. Um, but uh, but overall, I'd be more cautious than anything. I don't really think that there's a point in having a position right now uh, until either, again, this area breaks at 3,400 even, or we pop back up into the middle of range, 3,450. I'd try a trade there, and then I'd try another trade at 3,480. So as long as you're below 3,480, I am overall bearish on this and likely to see this result being resolved to the downside and take another stab at those 3,200 to 3,250 lows, just to measure move off this bear flag and also off this metric triangle. But you know, until that actually happens, just more mental masturbation. Now, mental masturbation is very good and it helps us prepare, but, uh, and, and we have a lot of indications saying that this is, you know, very likely to happen relatively soon. Um, but still taking its time, man, still taking its time. That's why I trade off price action. So probably today is going to be, uh, I would imagine a slower day. I'd imagine it's a slower day, but hey, uh, I'll be back on later, most likely with some live stream action, assuming that I don't, that, assuming that I feel all right. I, di I am a little bit underslept myself. Hope, uh, hope, hope this, uh, hope my words came out okay during this video. But, uh, but hey, if, uh, if I don't see you later, well, again, lower support 3400, higher, higher resistance 3480. If you break 3400, I mean, technically you still do have, you know, your prior low at 3360. But I'd imagine at that point in time, it probably does just, you know, uh, actually fill the move. Um, so yeah, that's going to do it for today. And uh, like I said, I'll, pro I'll probably be back on later, um, but no promises. Maybe I'll get a little bit of a nappy and feel better. But overall, I always want to be wishing you well. Uh, pleasure speaking with you on this lovely, what is it, Tuesday or Wednesday? Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Yeah. Hey, happy Tuesday. Hope you're having a great Tuesday and I'll be, and, uh, and look forward to speaking with you soon. Take care.